Green's arrangement last oh, week. Great.
unexpected Jesus born to set thy people Good morning, and welcome to worship at All Saints, whether you are gathered here with us on South Main Street or whether you are worshiping through the internet. It's great to have you here, whether you are a longtime member of All Saints or worshiping with us for the first time. Please join the choir as we sing the intro. Blessed are you, God of might and majesty, for you promise to make the desert rejoice and blossom, to watch over the strangers and to set the prisoners free. As we light these candles, satisfy our hunger with your good gifts, open our eyes to the great things you have done for us, and fill us with patience until the coming of the Lord Jesus. O ransom people of the Lord, come. 
let us travel on God's holy way and enter into Zion with singing. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Baruch. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from Isaiah chapter 12. Canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah. Please let us read responsively. Surely it is God who saves me. For the Lord is my stronghold 
and my sure defense. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing. And on that day, you shall say, Make his deeds known among the peoples. Sing the praises for the Lord, for he has done great things. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then shall we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary For the chaff, he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Susan Paulo Sherwine, poet, hymn writer, thinker, who entered hospice care last week, says that Advent is not about waiting. It's not only about waiting, she says. It is the stirring of the living God within God's people to live lives rife with God. She goes on, Advent is not only watching. 
It is the active becoming of God's people, pressed in upon by future and past, to live a holy present. For adult followers of Christ, Advent is not waiting for the baby Jesus to be born. God has lifted up the lowly. Past is present. The hope that fills Advent is not for a maybe, perhaps, not yet event. Future is now. Who was, who is, who is to come. So how is your Advent going? I don't mean how is your Christmas busyness going. Advent isn't about tree trimming and card writing, present shopping, or navigating family expectation, holiday parties, or travel during a pandemic. Advent is about waiting and watching for Jesus. Waiting for Jesus to transform the world with mercy and surprise. It is about reflection, and yes, repentance and renewal. Advent is about gathering around word and sacrament. It's about coming to the table for the strength to focus on justice and peace. God's word today begins with Zephaniah. So if you were playing bingo error in the bulletin today, the reading wasn't from Baruch. That was last week. It was from Zephaniah, a prophet we don't hear a whole lot from. He prophesied before the reforms of King Josiah in the 7th century BCE. He condemned Israelite idolatry and the society's oppression of the poor. He reminded that God commanded obedience to the covenant and that God will punish offenders. But we didn't hear that today. That's in the beginning of his book. What we heard today is from the end of this very short prophecy written during the Babylonian captivity. What we hear today is a song of joy. And instead of writing with despair, the prophet writes with confidence. He writes with confidence and joy for all of us who struggle. So that all who see no end to their circumstances today might rejoice, might rejoice in the coming of God's promises, those things for which we wait and prepare during Advent. This text is purely about what God has done, what God is doing, and what God is about to do. It is a joy to hear, and it stands in such sharp contrast to the word from the gospel reading where John the Baptist doesn't seem to have gotten the joy memo today for this third Sunday of Advent. We find John, as we were introduced to him last week, out in the wilderness. He's baptizing many, and he is slamming everyone who gathered just to watch it, or those who came because they were just a little bit curious. He says, you bunch of snakes, who warned you? Who warned you to run from the coming judgment? Who caused you to slither down here to the river? Do something to show that you really have given up your sins. A little bit of water on your snake skins isn't going to deflect God's judgment. It's your life itself that must change, not your outer skin. And don't think you can pull rank by claiming Abraham as your father. Being a child of Abraham is neither here nor there. God can make children out of stones if God wants. What counts is your life. Is it green? Is it flourishing? Because if it's dead wood, it goes on the unquenchable fire. All right, that translation's a little bit different than the new revised standard version I read earlier. There's not a lot of joy from John this week. Or is there? Heaven is not only about joy, about waiting and hoping. As John reminds us, it's also about judgment. Advent is preparation not only for remembrance of Jesus' birth as a baby in Bethlehem all those years ago, but also about his return to power and glory 
in our lives today. Pastor and martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer spoke of this in an Advent sermon I stumbled upon this week that he delivered in 1928. We have become so accustomed to the idea of divine love and of God's coming at Christmas that we no longer feel the shiver of fear that God's coming should arouse in us. The God of the world draws near to the people of our little earth and lays claim to us. The coming of God is truly not only glad tidings, but first of all frightening news for everyone who has a conscience. Only when we have felt the terror of the matter can we recognize the incomparable kindness. God comes into the very midst of evil and of death and judges the evil in us and in the world. And by judging us, God cleanses and sanctifies us, comes to us with grace and love. I wonder in the midst of the rise of authoritarianism in Germany and the Second World War, whether anyone was able to find comfort in that sermon preached in 1928. John's call to repentance isn't about guilting us into trying to figure out how many good good deeds will save us from God's wrath. The both and nature of God for whom we wait calls us into Advent to wonder, is it judgment or salvation? Should we fear it or should we welcome it? And the answer, of course, is yes. All of that. And so with the crowds listening to John, with those who heard the sermon of Bonhoeffer, we too ask, then what shall we do? What is my role? The question isn't, what should we do for salvation? but rather, what should we do with salvation? Because there's nothing that we can do to earn God's mercy. God loves you, no exceptions. John tells us that while we're baptized with water by human hands, it is God through Christ Jesus who will ignite our life of faith. And he'll do that with a refining, cleansing, purifying fire. Holy Spirit on fire within us will continuously change us from the inside out. Being called a bunch of snakes, being warned about the wrath of unquenchable fire is joyful when we see it in the lens of our baptismal covenant, when we see it in the purifying and cleansing nature of Christ. Because the good news is that through the waters of faith and forgiveness, God makes a clean sweep of our lives. God takes out the trash of our sins and brokenness and throws it on the fire. And beloveds, the good news this day is that God is not finished with you yet. God is not finished with the world yet. While the process of refining and cleansing and purifying may be painful and fearful, it is the essential work of God's grace and care. Through it, we are drawn more fully into life with God. Life where God is in your head and in your understanding. Where God is in your eyes and in your seeing. Where God is in your mouth and in your speaking. Where God is in your hands and in your sharing. Where God is in your heart and in your loving. This Advent, may you recognize the power of baptism. Of the faith that has been ignited within you. Of a spark of fire burning to refine you and of the comforting, sustaining Holy Spirit that is working right now to change you from the inside out.
May that bring you joy. And in that joy, may your gentleness be known to everyone, because the Lord is near. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Holy God, renew your church and raise up leaders who announce your good news. Grant peace to congregations and seminarians in the midst of transition. Guide the work of candidacy and call committees. Hear us, O God. Creating God, your spirit brought forth the earth and all that is in it. Breathe life into us that we are inspired to live in harmony with one another and the planet. Hear us, O God. Shepherding God, you lead your people in paths of righteousness. Raise up prophets in our own day who warn against captivity to greed and point us to the freedom found in generosity. Hear us, O God. Nurturing God. You come near in times of worry and need. Cradle us in your arms, that we trust you and are not afraid. Attend to any who are hungry, imprisoned, or ill this day. Hear us, O God. Rejoicing, God, you exult over us in singing, enliven the song of this assembly, and bless the ministry of church musicians. With instruments and dance, join our voices to the song of all creation. Hear us, O God. Comforting God, we pray for all who have died or been impacted by the storm of tornadoes. Hear us, O God. We give you thanks for your servants who show, showed us your goodness and grace. By the power of your spirit, Keep us steadfast in faith until we make our home with you. Hear us, O God. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of God. God, for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. The peace of God be with you always. Let's share a sign of God's peace and love from our places this morning. The congregation may be seated for a few brief announcements. It is my pleasure to welcome the Reverend Johanna Barrett 
our sabbatical rector who is worshiping with us, I invite you to uh, greet Pastor Jo, or jo, just Jo as she is comfortable with, um, in the parish hall downstairs immediately following worship. Um, we will have coffee hour without coffee downstairs, as has been our custom during the pandemic. Christmas flower uh, dedications need to be in soon. There is information in the um, e-news, um, and so I encourage you to check that out. Don Holm is with us uh, this morning to talk about our Christmas offering. And as Don comes up uh, to the pulpit, uh, we had envelopes on each pew yesterday, um, and then we hosted Tuba Christmas, and the envelopes disappeared, so maybe we'll receive some <laughs> offerings from the community. As you come into the worship spaces where you see the, um, the offering plates, there are envelopes for the special Christmas offering, and many of you have received letters um, and your home mail. Don. I was looking at in front of my, my pew and saying, there's no time. And there's no envelope here. <laughs> so Bill solved the problem for us. But at any rate, every year All Saints gives uh, a special offering uh, for organizations that we feel you would be interested in contributing to. And this does not come out of the church budget. It goes directly to the uh, people that have been chosen each, each year. And um, our mission outreach team is the organization that helps determine um, who is going to receive um, the uh, funds for each year. La Via Moldova Solar Saints Initiative and All Saints Episcopal Mission and Ministries are the reception recipients we, we have chosen. Um, this week's e -notes, you will have seen, if you haven't already, uh, a description of sort of what I'm going to be talking about today, so you can, um, uh, and it's going to be about um, La Via Moldova. And next week, it will be about um, the um, Solar Saints. Um, so you can choose to support any one of the three choices uh, based upon percentages. So if you wanted everything to go to one, you would just put on your Christmas envelope or the check um, that one organization. But if you wanted to go to all three, you can do that. or or two, or whatever you choose. Um, and then also you can go online and um, go to uh, wolfsaints.com and um, there's a, a sign that says donate on the home page. You can click on that and that will go to the donations page and then you'll see a Christmas offering and that's where you would put in your offering that you wanted to choose. So there's many ways that you can do it, but we hope you will do that. Um, so, uh, La Vida Moldova is in uh, Chisinau, Mold Moldova. Moldova is a very small, it's the smallest country in the former um, Eastern Europe and um, that area, but when we talk about small, um, the um, city of Chisinau is about 800. We wouldn't be talking about this, this, this organization. So uh, I talked to, um, or not talked, but emailed um, Rachel this uh, last week and said, you know, what, what do you need or what are your needs? And uh, so she sent me back a description of what they're looking for, which I'd like to read to you. So she says, since March of 2010, we have been carrying out our activity in partnership with local public school, formerly an orphanage, through an after-school program of extracurricular activities for approximately 30 to 40 children. And that includes art, music, play therapy, life skills, moral, spiritual education, outings in the city, positive discipline, uh, 
nature discovery, development and encouragement of creativity, supplementary homework help, as well as individual assistance for children uh, who have difficulty reading and writing. And um, in the last few years, they've also been providing a hot lunch for every school day for the children enrolled in the program. So it's exhausting just reading all the stuff that they do. And I think that it takes a serious commitment to um, uh, continue with their enthusiastic support. And then she talks about the pandemic a little bit. It was quite a blow to our community and left many families in desperate circumstances, mainly due to a loss of income. We also had three Moldovan staff leave due to health concerns. Currently, the challenges we face at the end of 2021 are inflation that has affected food and the cost of living. Also, the risk of pandemic, of the pandemic continue to be a challenge to both physical and mental health of our staff, parents, and children. And then she gave us a list of some sort of things that you might be able to visualize as far as uh, this costs so much. So if you were contributing a certain amount, it might, part of that might go to you, to uh, these needs. 